Hi, my name's Dave Bronze. I write instrumental guitar music with a Celtic symphonic twist. For my new album, I decided rather than spend £3,000 on a hot rodded Marshall Plexi, I'd make my own. These videos are a diary of that process. Hi everybody, thanks so much for following all the videos so far. We're really near the end of the build uh, now. There's just one more video left after this one. So this stage, um, what you're gonna see in this video is the final assembly of the amp. Uh, I had to troubleshoot some issues that I have in the amp as well. So I've got some short uh, sort of uh, footage of me doing that. Uh, also, uh, it, has information on uh, how I installed the channel switching and the relays and stuff like that. Um, I did, however, have some thoughts about videoing me actually firing the amp up the first time and doing all the tests, so the high voltage tests. I decided um, not to film that process. A few reasons. I really wanted to have my full concentration on, you know, the process of doing the testing and switching the amp on without worrying about the cameras. The other thing is, is even though I've been building amps for a long time, I still worry that it might go wrong or I might make a mistake or it might go bang. And uh, I kind of <laughs> don't want people watching these videos who've never built an amp before going in, building an amp, firing it up, not really knowing what they're doing with the potential to kill yourself. Because these amps, they run at about four to five hundred volts. Um, I've had electric shocks building amps. Fortunately, nothing too serious. Uh, but even with the experience that I have, I've made mistakes and had a few nasty shocks. Um, so I really, after debating for a long time about what to do, I decided not to include any footage of me testing the amp. If you do build an amp and it's from a DIY kit, then usually they come with instructions on how to safe, taste it safely. If you're not sure, and even if you built the amp, it's really worth just taking it to an amp tech just to check it over and get him to help you do the tests and teach you how to do it. Um, there are forums online that go through these things as well. Uh, I don't really feel like I have the qualifications to advise you because I'm just a hobbyist at the end of the day. So. So there you go, so, so, so that's that. Uh, the second thing is about the cab. I um, did. I have built some of the cabinets for the amps. I didn't build this one, so if you're hoping to see some woodwork, uh, I didn't do it. This amp cab was built for a former student of mine called Robert Tomlinson. He started guitar lessons in his late 60s and um, became very good on the guitar. Uh, but he contracted asbestosis and was given a really short time to live so um, one of his last wishes was to hear the amp played and I'm really glad that he did hear the amp blasting out of my house uh, so I don't have any footage of the cabinet being built but I am gonna go over how I finished it and uh, how I you know how I varnished it and all that kind of thing so with no further ado Let's jump into the penultimate video of this uh, series. Having said that uh, I won't be videoing any tests, what, there is one test you can do uh, without even switching the amp on, and that is checking that the earth pin of the plug that you're, of the cable that you're plugging into your amp um, is connected to the chassis. That is the most important uh, connection, safety connection. So you can just um, get your multimeter and do a continuity test from the earth pin uh, on the plug um, of the cable, not the socket in the wall, the, pl the plug on the cable, and check that it is connected to the chassis. And then you can check all the ground connections on the amplifier, uh, which in my amp is all the black cable. Uh, that's going to really protect you if you if your the earth pin isn't connected to the chassis that really is a recipe for killing yourself so um, yeah there's a little test you can do
Right, what we're going to be doing now is uh, putting some grill to go on the back of the cabinet for the amp. I've had this cabinet made out of uh, ash and we need, because it's a 100 watt amp, we need a fairly sizable uh, vent for to dissipate the heat from the valves. And um, so I bought this grill sheet and I just bought it from our local hardware store. It's pretty expensive stuff actually. Uh, one idea I had, um, I, I, one thing I've done in the past is I've bought, you know those disposable barbecues and just taken the grill off the top, uh, spray painted that and used that. Uh, unfortunately for this amp, the grill needs to be a lot wider than a disposable barbecue so I've had to go out and buy it. Uh, and this, uh, I bought it in a sheet that's about twice this size. Okay, so uh, the other thing you're going to need is some uh, tin snips. These are like uh, scissors for cutting metal. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to screw it in using some tiny wood screws and some uh, plastic washers. So I'm just going to drill some tiny uh, pilot holes here uh, with my drill and that's just to make it easier to, to screw in. To finish the cabinet, uh, I decided not to varnish it, but to use Danish oil. And the great thing about Danish oil is you can just rub it on with a cloth and uh, just apply a few layers and get a really even finish. Now, the Danish oil that I bought really smelt bad, and I mean bad, <laughs> for about a month. So do some research online on which Danish oils don't stink really badly. Um, it wasn't even a chemical smell, it was just a really unpleasant smell that has now worn off, uh, fortunately. But yeah, do some research online before getting your Danish oil. But I do recommend it if you're not very good with a brush and not very good at varnishing. It's super easy and leaves a, leaves a really good finish. Just a quick word on valves, um, there's a lot of things online about you know you should use new old stock valves and the valves we have now are not as good as the ones in the 60s and experiment with different kind of valve brands and old brands from the 60s is really fun but personally I just think a lot of the modern valves we have they are really good, uh, I use mainly JJ valves and sometimes tube amp, amp doctor valves but I wouldn't get caught up too much with, you know, um, you know what I call cork sniffing uh, because the biggest difference you can make to the tone of an amp isn't really changing the tubes so much as changing the speaker or the cabinet. Um, so, you know, that's what I think anyway. No, no doubt people will comment on this video and say I'm wrong, but... <laughs> volume of the hub hum, on the main game channel at quarter past the hour. Okay, this is the exact same settings but with the different power power supply. It's quite, it's loud when you get near. But if I'm far away, there's just a slight hum. Also seems a bit quieter, to be honest. So you can see the amp uh, in the background uh, of this shot and uh, after a lot of frustration I managed to isolate the problem which was the power supply. The toroidal um, power supply that I bought second hand from someone uh, just was causing a lot of hum, I don't really know why. Uh, toroidal 
power supply is supposed to be quieter, so maybe I just got a bad one. And modulus amplification sent me a traditional box transformer um, and uh, the hum was solved. The amp was also not really loud enough for a 100 watt amp. Uh, it was only outputting a few watts and that's because I'd wired the bias circuit, the little variable resistor from the last video. I'd wired that wrong and there just wasn't the correct voltage hitting the tube. So uh, yeah, I don't know how I missed that, but anyway, uh, that's fixed now. So the amp is loud. Then I went on to install what you're gonna see next, which is the uh, relays, which is a board from Tube Town, and the effects loop, which is from Metropolis Amplification, which is the board that is used in the Friedman B100 amp. So I installed them and uh, they work great. So there are a few modifications I've made since finishing the amp off. So the first thing here is the regulator uh, I installed, well actually Daniel Holmes from Damplifier installed to regulate the power for the relay switching unit. I also installed a, a relay unit to change the channels. You can't see it very well but it's basically the relays of those two black boxes. One changes the clean to dirty channel, the other relay changes um, from low gain to like high gain for a solo boost. boost. It just switches in an extra uh, preamp valve. And then also the effects loop here which is a pre-built effects loop. The other thing is we had huge problems with the noise from the power supply injecting hum into the audio. So we cured that by uh, doing a floating ground by putting a capacitor there to the ground of uh, the jack socket. Okay, so that's the amp done. It's ready to go and in the next episode, episode 11, you'll hear it in all its glory. So don't forget to tune into that episode. Please subscribe to my channel guys and please go over to davebronze.com and check out my music. I'd be really grateful. Thank you.